I'm sailing. I'm sailing. It's Wednesday night. I'm your host, Pat Renwick, and it is time for the glorified version of a bass fishing talk show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stray Cast. Yes. Plain and simple. It's the glorified version of a bass fishing talk show. Boy, oh boy. And we are as excited as ever tonight on this show. We got two first timers coming on first. Super excited. The iconic Edwin Evers coming on first. Yes, sir. Do you guys say Evers or Evers? Evers. I say Evers also, but yes. I've heard people say Evers. I think that's incorrect. I've heard Tommy Sanders say Evers. We could Evers. ask him. He might know. Tommy Sanders knows everything. He says Evers? Evers. Really? Yes. Ever. I heard it in that one uh, bass rap song that they played before tournaments. Oh, yeah, about the Zell Roland Popar. Yeah. I know exactly. Topwater King. The Topwater King. Yeah. Zell Forever Roland. Edwin Evers. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Hey, coming on again, or uh, the second guest, another first timer again here tonight, Jeff Sprague coming on the show. <laughs> These guys are ranked one and three in the BPT. Not too bad. You down with BPT? Yeah, you know me. That's what I'm saying. Speaking of knowing him, ladies and gentlemen, he's a rhino chondriac. He got the beans above the Franks <laughs> one more time again tonight. He's the drummer of the band. Give it up for Ryan Popcorn. Put it spinning. Put it spinning. Are you loaded like a freight train? Yeah, man. Flying like an aeroplane? I'm flying light. Flying lightheaded. You're getting ready for a big derb over yeah, at uh, Derb. He's getting ready for a big derb at one of those lakes that no I one said can spell derb. correctly. Gosh dang it. Yeah, there it is. Derb. There it is. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's one of the two famous bass lakes that no one can pronounce correctly or spell correctly. Juntersville? Yeah. Okay. Gundersville. Gundersville. Just like uh, Chickamauga. Chicka. Yeah. What is that? From the horizon. I think I know. Is he flying is. off in the sunset in his color TV screen? Hi. Hi, JP. Hi. It's JP. Hi. Watch it's him dynamite. explode. He's the hip hop fisherman. The OG. The original hip hop fisherman. Say hello to JP. Hi. Yeah. JP. Hi. You know what's awesome about uh, Jeff Sprague? Got to talk into it. Go ahead, JP. What up? What's up? What's awesome about Jeff Sprague? Jeff Sprague is an amazing fisherman. That's it. Why don't you just move the mic? Like, you've never done this before. What is wrong with Dude, you? the cords are short. You don't have to pick it up. Right. He was got never it, a Motown right. singer. What is, okay, there he is. Very yeah. good. Okay, so you know what's awesome about Jeff Sprague? He's an amazing fisherman. And what he has offered tonight, he and Gene LaRue Bait Company are offering up the Stray Cast prize pack tonight. Super easy. What do they do? How do they win it, JP? Hi. Hi. <laughs> That's right, it's JP. Hi. Hi. JP. Hi. He's still stuck on that. You love your new intro, don't I you? Love it, I, do. <laughs> I, I can tell. How do they win the prize, JP? Just, it's really just like and share the live feed, and you're entered. Like like and share That's the it. live Facebook feed, and you Boom. are entered in the drawing. Nicole Thor, bass fishing supermodel, she returns tonight. She will pick the winner of the fifty dollar prize pack, courtesy of Jean Larue, and. Jeff Sprague. Like and share the live Facebook feed. Speaking of live Easy. wire, yeah. you know who's a real live wire? Who's that? He's a secret does agent, he, too. Does he have red hair? He has red hair, and Can he's a secret more? agent. He's already grimaced three times. I'm counting his um, his gruffness. He is on three gruffs. Can I have three shotgun salute for three gruffs, please? Turn that round upside down. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the ginger ninja, Andrew Ellenberger. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> How amazing is that? See? See his mood change right there? Yeah. It's going to be a good time for all. Hey, uh, we got two of the top three in the BPT coming at you tonight. So put the power poles down. Don't go anywhere. It's action-packed. See you in a minute. Double Pete Glusick point.
step up your game. It has been said that professionals are only as good as the tools they work with. And Alpha Angler has developed the ultimate set of tools for you, the competitive angler. Alpha Angler Custom Rods, brought to fruition by the passion of Master Craftsman Jake Boomer and 2017 BASS Angler of the Year, Brandon Palinick. Alpha Angler Rods are custom made in the USA, designed and engineered to be perfect. Alpha Angler utilizes a very unconventional approach to making the very best bass rods, from drop shotting to flipping. Alpha Angler's focus is on building perfectly balanced tournament grade bass rods at an affordable price. Join the Alpha Lusion today and purchase direct at alphaangler.com. Step up your game, alphaangler.com. Hey guys, Micah Frazier here. I've got a bait from War Eagle Baits called the Buzz Toad. Big thing lately has been putting a toad style bait on a buzz bait and preferably it's my favorite way to fish one. Uh, this bait here's got a quick planing head, a great hook, and it squeals right out of the package. Uh, the, the body of this bait is big and bulky so it allows you to skip it. It, it planes quicker than a skirted bait would. Um, in my opinion, it's just the way to, it's the way to fish a buzz bait. So y'all check this thing out, it's pretty awesome. All right, welcome back. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty neat, pretty neat. I'm your host, Pat Remwick. This is Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television, the glorified version of a bass fishing talk show. And we are super excited to bring to you right now the iconic Edwin Evers. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Edwin. Yes. Well, welcome to the show, Edwin. Oh, thanks for having me on. Hey, could you uh, could you hit that video button on your uh, Skype machine right there? Because we can hear you, but we can't see you. Man, guys, uh, let me see. Oh, right there. There he is. There What's he is. going on, Ed? Well, give me an internet <laughs> high five. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Dude, congratulations. Another victory. It's outstanding. Oh, Thank you, thank you. It was it was amazing just to catch that eight pounder at the end of the day. It was unbelievable. Yeah, crazy, just absolutely crazy. On cue, it, it sure was. Now, I read about you that one of your happy places. Now, I read this on the internet, so it has to be true. I mean, we know this. Let's get that out of the way. But one of your happy places is your recliner at home <laughs> with a remote control in hand. Is that true, Edwin? Oh yeah, that was like early in my career. And uh, since then, I've graduated, and it's probably now a tractor out at the pecan farm. Okay, well, perfect. Nice. That, that is a perfect <laughs> segue because it fits right into my analogy. As we evolve a as men, a recliner is a very important thing to us. I mean, let's face it. Oh, it is. Okay, it, it really very, is. Very, very. And, and I must confess, it is one of my happy places. I have a few of them, too, you know, but, and that's one of my happy places. But as we sit in that comfortable recliner, we have a tendency to drift and dream, don't we, Edwin? Oh, yeah. So, All kinds of things. So let's go back 20 years ago to Edwin's recliner, okay? I mean, you're right out of college. Now, that recliner changes forms. It might have been a milk crate in a, a folding chair. <laughs> 
when yeah. you when you first got going. Okay, but and, and it's evolved. I mean, and you had dreams, and and who would think that those dreams would turn out to be what they are, man? A Bass Master Master Classic champion, eleven eleven BASS victories, three MLF victories. I mean, just I mean, and 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 Ryan, this is an astounding fact here, Ryan. Ryan, how many pounds? of bass and how much money has Edwin caught over the years. We like to count professionals money, just so you know, on this show. That's what we do. So give him a little interesting tidbit. You have caught 8,045 pounds of bass. Wow. 8,045. That's a lot. That's a lot of pounds. That's a lot of pounds. Okay. In money, that equates to $3,110,878. Where did it all go? (laughs) We're counting it still. Don't worry. But do you yeah. know do you know how much that comes out to in money per pound? I would love bass. to know. No. Three hundred and eighty six dollars a pound. Three hundred and eighty six dollars a pound. <laughs> All right. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna go to our producer, the Ginger Ninja. Is that a record? That yes, is that is that the, is the yes. record per pound. You are the holder oh. of the per pound record. And you won. Oh. That little beep indicates that you won. That's what that sound was. <laughs> <laughs> so dreams change, okay? I mean, now here is the 2019 Edwin Avers, and you are in your tractor. That is your recliner now. Um, okay. So my question to you is the remote control is still in your hand. What are you going to watch now in 2019? What's the dreams now, Edwin? Oh, Where are you going? Man. <laughs> Watching Major League Fishing here lately, you know, it's been pretty exciting and uh... – that's been the deal, watching it. That, that I mean, so in other words, are you telling me that you're living the dream right now? Oh, without a doubt. <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> you see how that weaved in there, Edwin? You see how when a plan comes together <laughs> like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not bad at all, man. I mean, and... And I want to go back a little more on your career. We, we've we've heard so much about the, the Bassmaster Classic victory. We've heard so much um, about your recent victory at Conroe. Um, I want to kind of go back on a, on a couple tournaments that stick out to me personally okay. about you. And, the, and it shows your versatility. You, in my opinion, are one of the most versatile anglers to ever fish. You, you might be awkwardly versatile, if that makes any sense, and I mean no disrespect by it, but uh, you, you always execute. That's the key to versatility, in my opinion. Okay, so here's the first derby that comes to mind. It's a grinder, a tough one, 2012 Lake Shelbyville. You remember that one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. it was like, I mean, what did you catch? Like, maybe, uh, I don't even know if you had 20 pounds of fish for a two-day derb. It was like some all-star yeah, deal maybe. or something. <laughs> Yep. I mean, that's an example of, 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 of the grind, of being versatile. Can you talk to me a little bit about that particular tournament and what was going on and how it relates to versatility? Uh, I just remember getting on a bike. I, I figured out those fish were suspended in the backs of those pockets, and uh, I was throwing a vibrating, uh, you know, a lipless crankbait. And, you know, it's just weird when you get a bite and if you can kind of like – think why is that fish there and the the shad and all that stuff it just it just kind of worked out and i was able to get more bites doing that you know that's that's what we all try to do as bass fishermen you know develop a pattern and and figure out why why you got that bite and uh you know i'm i'm about as stubborn as they come you know and i don't ever think i'm out of it and and i'll compete up until the very last minute so you know those those hard events like that in illinois i I used to be from Illinois and I wanted to do good, you know, being from up there. And, and, uh, you know, I, I just, I like those hard events because I, I feel like those are probably the easiest ones you could ever win um, when you're getting very, very few bites. Uh, just because, you know, I'm just so stubborn. I'm going to keep doing it all day long. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and that's a perfect example of a grind derby. I, I grew up fishing Shelbyville. That's kind of where I learned to bass fish. And it, it is grind. Yeah, I mean, and that's probably now, right. In, in your defense of Selby, but we were there like late fall. If we would have been there, I think, in the spring, it would have been a whole different event. You know, there's a lot of bass yeah. in that. But you go anywhere in the late fall, it's hard fishing no matter what state you're in. Unless you're Rick Clun, and then that you, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rick's one. There's only one. <laughs> Another derby that sticks in my mind is an event that you did not win. And Yet, it is another example of your versatility, and that was in the first year of the Elite Series, 2006. Um, and what what was the what was the table, table, table rock? Escape me for a second. Last one of the year. That oh was, wow, dude! That was one of the first examples of video game fishing on television. Yeah, and I remember, I remember you. I mean, I think you. Correct me if I'm wrong. You seemed kind of fresh with the drop shot technique, but you kicked ass at it. It, it uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. I uh... You know, back early in my career, I used to make fun of people that had spinning rods. I called them fairy wands, and I wouldn't own one. And <laughs> and after getting my teeth kicked in and all that, I, I had to get better at it. So I really tried to spend as much time as I could with uh, people that were good at it. And actually, some of those people I spent, you know, were from that Midwestern area, you know, Mike Webb and, and Tim Sonato. And I just tried to learn off all those people that were really good with spinning rods and and I tried to make it a strong suit of mine. And and you and you did it. And look at this. Boom. The drop shot just plays a <laughs> crucial role again. Full circle, dude. There's the recliner. There's the dreams. Yeah. Right yeah. there. Absolutely outstanding, man. I, I also heard it, you know, read about you, too, that you don't like natural lakes in Florida. And then you, you just go in and versatile the hell out of that, too. I mean, come on. What's going on with you, dude? I, I, you know, from the recliner to natural lakes, I'm trying to uh, do better as I get older. I'm <laughs> up age and trying to do better, trying to be more like Rick Klein. And, and some of those weaknesses or nemesis, you know, make them, uh, you know, make them a little bit better and have a better attitude towards them. <laughs> well, you are. Um, so are you saying that you're working on getting more well seasoned? Is that trying. Okay. Yeah, trying. <laughs> yeah. There, there it it's is. working. It is working. It's working. It, it sure is. Um, I love to watch you spin out. I'm not going to kid you. I like when you okay. get mad at you. I love it. <laughs> I, I love, I mean, when you start talking to you, I, I know that you're, you're spinning. When we hear the famous, dang it, Edwin, dang it, Edwin. <laughs> and you're talking to you. I mean, dude, it's awesome. Oh, yeah. It's usually a sign oh, yeah. that he's fixing to start catching them, he, too. It is. It's kind of a trigger mechanism, yeah. I think, for him in his brain. <laughs> so when we hear, dang it, Edwin. Listens to himself. Yeah, look yeah. out. Look out, because you're kicking yourself in your ass with your knee. You know, that boom. Yep, yep. I it, am. I it, am. <laughs> so, I mean, is that is that a correct, I mean, an ad, uh, accurate statement? Is that a motivator for you when you start talking like that? Oh, heck, I don't know. You know, <laughs> they always ask you to talk on TV, and, and, and I'm not I'm not one to really, you know, talk a whole bunch to begin with, but, you know, I do get pretty frustrated when I'm making mistakes or not getting done what I feel like I should be getting done. So, you know, I, I, I'm probably, uh, you know, maybe a little more on the intense side than some others, and, and I hate to lose, and, and uh, I'll probably wear a few of those emotions on my sleeve. And it's awesome. And that's the rawness that we have come to admire about you. I mean, it's kind of what you see is what you get. So you're, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> <true>. <laughs> and, I, and I don't know that thing about you. You've done plenty of talking, so I think you're selling yourself short there. So come on, Edwin. You're a hell of a talker. You're a hell of a talker. <laughs> so uh, another thing that you are no stranger to is obviously victory. Okay, you do know how to win, and you are no stranger, no doubt. But my question to you is, I'd like to compare victories, okay? So, for example, how does it feel to win with different formats? For example, the format of the Bass Pro Tour. It's kind of like, okay, time's up, you have won. Now, let's go to another example from when you used to fish the BASS or another tournament format similar to that, to the winning feeling on stage. Can you compare the emotions? Is there a difference in emotions? Uh, you know, the emotions of the Bass Pro Tour probably play out throughout the entire day because you know where you stand at any time during the day. And... You know, it, it is kind of probably anticlimactic, you know, coming to the post game show because I've already know I already knew that man, I had enough weight, right. you know, and when they when the amount of time passes, uh, but with that said, it doesn't, 
you know, at the Bassmaster Tour, you don't ever really truly know, you know, what we used to fish, you know, what your competitor has and, and what you truly have. Because, you know, a lot of times I wouldn't weigh all those fish. But, uh, you know, it's early. You know, it's really early in, in, in the deal. You know, if I had to choose between the two, you know, the Bassmaster deal, it's a, it's a little bit more laid back throughout the day. You know, you just got to catch five fish, and, and it can happen at any time during the day. And once you get the number of, of what you feel comfortable with, it's kind of laid back the rest of the day. And the Bass Pro Tour, a one-pounder counts, a two-pounder counts, a five-pounder counts. They all count to your bottom line, so you never have a break the entire day. You know, if you lose a one-and-a-half-pounder in the Bass Pro Tour, it hurts. I mean, it right. hurts just like, you know, any other fish, because that's a fish you are going to have at, at your bottom line, at the bottom of your day, it was going to be on the bottom line and, and go towards your weight. So everything is magnified in that Bass Pro Tour. So what you may lack and, and having the big, you know, emotional deal on stage, you well more than make up for it throughout the entire day. Yeah, you're white knuckling all day. You're going through the oh entire emotion of the gamut yes. of emotions. I, yes. It's it's yes. like you're back to your your um your um your tractor recliner. So you're it's like <laughs> it's like okay, mowing a nice smooth field or oh, a yeah. day through a thickets. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So I yeah. guess the the Bass Pro Tour is a day through a thickets cuz you're constantly <laughs> Okay, I don't know. I'm <laughs> yeah. run, I'm running with that one. I'm running with that. No, one. Okay. That's okay. that's what was so incredible about your your last ten minute eight pounder there. <laughs> I've I don't think I've missed an MLF since its beginning, and I've never seen anybody take a break at the end because they felt like they knew they were. <laughs> it was the first one I've seen where it was like it, it's over. There was no dang it, Edwin. You said they got to catch a fifteen pounder to get me. I, I kind of felt like that was awesome. It was awesome. awesome well, thank you. Yeah. yeah. I, I was, you know, I was wiped out. You know, I, I'd fished as hard as I could possibly fish for how many ever days I could fish. And and trying to lift that trophy at the end of that night at the postgame show, I was, like, struggling <laughs> with all I could do to get that thing above my head. And, uh, yeah, some people were commenting on it the other day. But, no, it was a monumental moment catching that eight-pounder. And to catch them all things on a drop shot. That's crazy. Do That's thought. nuts. You know, I've been Come throwing on. a vibrating jig and flipping a pit boss and, you know, big – fish baits the entire day hadn't caught a fish since i've been there on drop shot had been on my deck every day and for whatever reason i turn around and i pick that drop shot up and i flip it in there and uh you know i, I felt that fish i bumped him with that vibrating jig and, and I, <laughs> I, I knew something was there you know like a, a bedding fish and and Man, when I picked up on that drop shot, I thought, man, it's, I, I don't think it's a grass carp. And then it come up, and I thought, oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, boy, it worked. Way bigger than five, six pounds. It was a monster. <laughs> and you, you said before making the cast, God, you got to be able to get a bite following up on one of these fish one of these times. Yeah, I, I've and been trying it's, hard to do it. it yeah. And there it was. Unreal. Man. Yeah. And you fish the way you like to fish. It's it's plain and simple. Especially mm -hmm. that that jig. What's with that jig? That I mean, you love that thing. You love it. <laughs> it's just the time of year, you know. It's, it's the time of year that vibrating jig. You no, know, no, your really jig, a... Edwin. The e. Oh yeah, that, that finesse jig. Heck yeah, that thing is awesome. That that's put a lot of fish in the boat, put a lot of dollars in my pocket. You know, the, the finesse jig that Andy makes up there in northeast northeastern states. Uh, it's a custom fin. Uh, Andy's custom bass jig, and what's special about it? It's got the old school living rubber, and anybody that knows anything about jigs, that old flat brown rubber. It's just got a special color, special texture, a special action in the water that you can't get from the newer products like the Uh Oh, we lost Edwin. You got us, Edwin? Uh-oh. Froze up. He cut out right on the jig. Oh, oh he's back. back. Can you, you got us, Edwin? I haven't lost you. Oh, okay. Yeah, we I'm lost sorry. we yeah, lost you for a minute. Sense. I think you were just running at us. I had to catch up real quick. I think. <laughs> hey, when... When them fish are on the bed, they'll do that. They'll run straight at the boat, they'll set the hook, and you don't ever get a get, get, get penetrated through the plastic. <laughs> but I mean, no doubt about it. That's that's a very a very special jig to you, man. I mean, it's oh, it is, man. After winning the classic on that thing, and the, it's just it's always got a special place and a time, and it's just a great bait to fish behind people and and 
in areas where, uh, you know, pressured fish, clear water fish, it's a really, really good bite. So I'd like to um, congratulate you on a couple other things. Um, first off, uh, those jigs are sold out at Tackle Warehouse, so congratulations on that. Yeah. And uh, I talked to Kurt and Casey at Power Pole, and the uh, remotes for the rod lockers are now sold out, too. So congratulations on that. Round of applause for an amazing job of sales for Edwin Avers right there. We tell it like it is here on Straight Cast. That's amazing. That's amazing, man. Hey, I know you're a very busy guy. I know that uh, that you got a lot going on. We do appreciate you coming on the show. But before you go, you're not going to get off that easy. OK, we got to okay. pl- we got to play a game show with you. All right. OK, that's what we do on this. This crazy bass fishing talk show is play game shows. So we're going to play. Uh, I'm nervous. I, you, should I be nervous? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. You should be nervous. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because okay. I want to hear I, what my goal is to hear. Dang it. Edwin out of you during this game. That gum it, Edwin. <laughs> Did he freeze again? Oh, he might have. Pur- pur- there it is. I think he hung up on us on purpose this I time. Think he's back. Oh no, you're back. back. Okay. I did not. Okay. 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 I All didn't right. hear you. If you asked me a question, I didn't hear it. Okay, I did not. And this this game is called Think okay. Like You're Not Thinking. Think like you're not thinking. That should be easy. Yeah, it's, it is. It's all us bass fishermen are great at it. So <laughs> basically, I'm going to give you a word or a phrase, and you tell me. I'm losing you. The f- yeah. You got me, Edwin. What is going on? Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, I got you back. I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm not. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Okay. Do you, do you got me now? I got you now. Okay. This is called Think Like You're Not Thinking. I'm going to give you a okay. word or a phrase, and you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Oh, no. Are you ready? Yes, sir. It's Think Like You're Not Thinking. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. First ever edition. Bass fishing superstar, yes, superstar Edwin Avers. Edwin, an amazing invention that you wish you had thought of. Power pole. A power pole. Very good answer. Edwin, a celebrity you were told you resemble. <laughs> I don't have any. Okay, that's that's acceptable. That's acceptable. Just make one up, though. Make somebody up. Uh, how about Rambo? You had the great picture. Of <laughs> on, 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 there you go. Rambo, you there? That was really good. That, that's, that was you, Rambo, <laughs> Oklahoma. I love all the. I loved every movie you ever had. That was like one of my all-time favorite movies. There it is. <laughs> A song you know every word to. Oh man. Uh, Thunder by Imagine Dragons. Okay. Wow. Excellent. Right. Excellent choice. You left hook to me there. If you had a chance to change something in professional bass fishing, what would it be? I think we could fish a lake and not have everybody else out there fishing at the same time. Okay. Or fish practice. I like it. It's the, it's not an open court. Yes. Not an open yeah. court. I wish I was as good a spinnerbait fisherman as this guy. That'd be Rick Klein. That'd be Rick Klein. Wow. Okay. Top two trailers for a vibrating jig. Lake Fork Magic Shad and a Berkeley Chicken Crawl. Okay. All right. I like it. The most irritating fish you ever caught. A striper. <laughs> I hate them. <laughs> they, they're dangerous, dude. They're dangerous. The, the most overused term in professional bass fishing. It's a biggin. Biggin. It's a biggin. It's a biggin. It doesn't matter if it's a biggin or not. It's always a biggin. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's it, when you lose one. Everybody it, says, oh, it was a biggin. It's a biggin. You know. It's a no see him. No yeah, see him. Yeah. It's your kryptonite. Four pounder. It's your kryptonite, Edwin. You're my kryptonite? What is my kryptonite? Yes. Uh, hmm. I'm having to think hard on this one. That's a tough one. Hmm. My wife. Could she be my kryptonite? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, she levels you. I think yeah. she levels you. That's your leveler. Yeah. That, that's definitely your leveler. 
Okay, last question of the evening for Edwin Avers. The best alternative use for live wells. I got it. Tell me. We're going to take that live well. We're going to take the divider out of the middle. We're going to put padding all in it and put it for a camera storage for the new MLF Bass Pro Tour. There it put is. That, put that camera down in there, and it's going to be perfect. We can store that thing when we run across the lake. And it won't bounce around. Exactly. There it won't is. Won't get wet. <laughs> Dude, uh, congratulations on your continued success, and thank you so much for, for coming on this show, man. We really appreciate it. Hey, thank you guys for having me. It's, it's a lot of fun. Look forward to doing it again real soon with you. Yeah, and we'll see you uh, in a couple weeks at the uh, BMC, man. We'll run into you there. Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Thanks, Ladies and friends. gentlemen, Edwin Evers, true champion right there. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Edwin. Hey. Thanks, guys. There it is. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> I want to remind you, like and share the live Facebook feed for a chance to win a $50 giveaway courtesy of gene larue and our next guest jeff sprague so put the power poles down don't you go nowhere we're coming right back more straight cast hey guys micah frazier here i've got a bait from war eagle it's called the screaming eagle you may think this is a, a small quarter ounce bait, but it's actually a half ounce. The Screaming Eagle has got weighted shank of the hook. It goes down into the shank, but it's hidden under the skirt. So you can maintain that compact size. War Eagle's born in the Ozarks and the you know, deep clear lakes. This is a great bait, deep clear water, spotted bass, small mouth. I mean, it, it's a fish catcher, y'all check it out. Discover the magic of balsa. For decades, professional fishermen and the angling elite come to rely on the fish-catching performance of hand-carved custom balsa lures. PH Custom Lures by Phil Hunt have assembled the comprehensive line of custom balsa baits. The original Hunt and Pete, Bill Lowen's dollar bill, Wesley Strader's Plop and Pete, and the new Matt Heron Fudd, in addition to the entire family of PH Custom Lures, are just what you need to get that edge over the competition. Discover the magic of balsa today and visit PH Custom Lures. Com. That's phcustomlures.com. Nothing stops your boat faster and holds it more securely than power pole shallow water anchors. Some folks hear power pole and think, oh man, I can't afford that. But did you know you can get the 8 foot power pole sportsman 2 hydraulic anchor now with Sea Monster 2.0 pump and heavy duty hydraulic hose for just $1,295? It's got all the features power pole anchors are famous for, and a single sportsman 2 will hold a bass boat up to 4,500 pounds. Go check it out at power pole.com to find a dealer near you. Power pole swift. Silent, secure. Round and round continues here on the crazy train. Welcome back to Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. This is Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. Hey. And Andrew Ellenberger is the producer back there. Kaplow Chow. JP High is the hip-hop fisherman. He's back there. Indeed. You want me to tell you what I'm most excited about? 
a guy that has taken the world of the Bass Pro Tour by storm. Coming out swinging, kicking ass, taking names, all that other good stuff, stealing lunch money, flat out ready for victory. For the first time ever on Straycast Outdoor Cartoon Television, we bring to you Jeff Spray. Yes! 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 Yes. Welcome to the show, Jeff. What's up, guys? I, I don't know. I'm fired up. I, can you tell? Yeah. Yeah, I love <laughs> it, man. It's uh, <laughs> excited to be here and finally get a chance to, uh, to chit-chat with you boys. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, it's a, we just like to have fun. You know, that's the, that's the whole concept here w- with Stray Cast. It's, we kind of like, um, we find that by maybe not taking things too seriously, that we can achieve great success. Does that make any sense to you? Absolutely. And that, I think that uh, a lot more people relate to that than, than we realize. You know, we find ourselves all too often super serious out there on the boat, super <laughs> serious in the world. And you know what? At the end of the day, we all got little stepbrothers in us, you know. Yeah. So I think it's just something that we relate to, you know. So are you saying you want to watch Cops later and get sweaty? Well, I mean, <laughs> hey, you got any baby oil? <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. It's, it's I, I want to hear about slip sinker. It's a <laughs> <laughs> so do you prefer a 316th or a 516th when you're uh, first starting to flip? There you go. Exactly right. Okay, exactly. you show us how to tie a knot, please. <laughs> <laughs> Man, dude, it's just cool to have you here. And, and, and I'm always intrigued by the leap, the, the leap of faith, the plunge. And your plunge was about – five years ago you've been at this game for about five years now right yeah full-time five years um started over on fldl uh, flw obviously and then um you know i've just kind of quietly just kind of held my place there it just seems like and i I never really tried to make any waves just always did my thing and then uh you know this this opportunity with the bass pro tour major league fishing presented itself and uh you know it was it was a no brainer for me. Absolutely, and and I mean that. So five years ago, you were um, you were police fire EMT. That was your occupation, right? Uh, pretty much, a little you know. So I, I've got a, a, a my best friend. He uh, he fishes FLW tour still. His name's Jason Reyes. Um, yeah. He he, you know, kind of uh, you know had an opportunity for me. Uh, you know, offered me a position in, uh, with a business that he had. So it allowed me to kind of to be integrated with that and, and step away from uh, from the police and fire and allow me to pursue the fishing. Uh, he saw uh, that, you know, I wanted to do it. And then I, I think he saw something in me probably that I didn't see in myself. Um, and, and, and I'm forever eternally grateful for that. So I owe a lot of this, you know, to, to someone who actually, you know, helped me help me get where I am too. lit that candle a little bit, huh? That's awesome. Oh, absolutely. You know, and that's, that's just what it's all about. You never know who you're going to run across in life. And it was just one of those deals that, you know, it was just meant to be put in front of me. And we, we went down that path. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, um, speaking of being um, uh, a police officer, do you know which one of your fellow Bass Pro Tour competitors used to be a sheriff? I do, actually. Uh, it's funny you say that because. I know he used to be a sheriff. I can't understand a single damn word he says, but I know he used to be a sheriff down there in Louisiana. So, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's the, it's the Cajun baby. I know. Uh, super great dude. We, we've already had some, you know, we've had some conversations. I love him to death. I just can't understand anything he says. When you see Cliff at, at stage three, ask him to say tempered, forged. Tempered and forged. Tempered, tempered <laughs> forged hook. Ask him to say tempered, forged hook. You will. Sounds like Temple Fools. Is gonna, that going to be his brain buster? It's, it's going to blow your mind. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise you. But, dude, uh, you are now, I think I am giving Jeff the official title of the man on fire, Denzel Washington, of bass fishing. I'm taking it away from Strader. Wow. Taking it away from Strader. <laughs> Because, I mean, come on, dude. I mean, you're number three ranked in the Bass Pro Tour. 
it's kind of a big yeah, deal. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it, it's still it's still early, you know. So and what? It's funny that we. I know, but hey, it's funny because um, Hackney pulled up to me the other day at Conroe. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, on, on the top forty day when we made it to the top to the top ten, and uh, he just looked over at me and in a simple phrase, he just said, "It's easy, ain't it?" And that's what he said, you know, and, and, and the thing about it is, is, and I just looked at him and said, man, I'm dumb enough to not make it hard. You know, that's the honest truth I feel like. Don't, don't, I'm just dumb enough to not make it hard. You know, I go out there and just fish what's in front of me and fish the condition and, you know, find what I can find. And then that's just all we can do is fish. Uh, so that's all there is to it, in, in my opinion, for me. Um, and if, as long as we can keep it dumbed down, I feel like we'll be all right. It's per- that's our philosophy here. Thank you. I, I love that. <laughs> That's why I knew I liked this guy. <laughs> it's, it's outstanding. It's easy, ain't it? But, but, but seriously, man, I mean, you, you took second place at stage two at Conroe. Eighth place, stage one. Just getting into this format. Fresh. Fresh, dude. Yeah, yeah. And just going I fishing. I love it, man. I mean, I, I can't say enough about it you know that's the honest truth is i really can't say enough about it because it's something new and exciting to get back into and i don't think that people realize just how much it gives you the drive to go back and go bass fishing again it's just like when you guys when anyone goes to the lake and they want to go fishing and catch what they can catch that's like that's what it's like for us now now we don't have to grind and maybe do something that we don't necessarily love to do. Like I might not want to punch a two ounce weight all day long to try to catch five bass. Now I get to go catch all the fish I can catch on the strongest pattern I can find. And that's, what's cool about it. I enjoy catching bass. I think it's fun. It's exciting. And if you get on the right patterns and you find what, what's really going on, you're going to catch big fish too. Those are going to come. So I just, I mean, I just like to say, so I go fishing. Is, is practicing changed for this type of format? No, no. Honestly, um, the, the the only thing in practice hasn't changed for me, and I don't know that it's changed for a lot of guys. Some guys may change it and not say something. But the only thing that I find myself doing now is, you know, practice is a day shorter. We only have two days. So now I'll, I'll up down. I'll just move a heck of a lot more in practice than I did previously. I, I don't I'm not allowed to fish in an area very long. Gotcha. OK, so you're more you're more thrifting it. In other words, you're going you're uh, you're Brian thrift in the situation. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm putting hours on that mercury. <laughs> you know, um, it's no secret and we won't sugarcoat it that the more exposure that a professional angler gets from a platform or a format um, usually equates to success. Correct. You know, it, it maybe it seems to be that way. Yeah. And it's okay. I mean, that's that, that's all part of this. We see it with athletes in every sport. We really do. Um, sure, sure. It's, well, I, I think a lot of times it's – it's. I don't mean to interrupt you. I think no, a go. lot of times – so I've read some, some, some head case books. Okay. You know what I mean? Like head case books like for to prepare you for mentally doing things as a mental as an athlete, you know, and things like that. Sure. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with um, you being recognized, and, you know, like you people recognizing what you already kind of believe in yourself, but you have that behind you and then you fit that you'll have to accept maybe a little bit to your full potential, if that makes any sense. Yeah, a- a- absolutely it does. A- absolutely. And, and I'm going to – the first time that I – um, I guess a, a way to, to put it would be the first time that I noticed you as a professional angler would have to be like 2016. And I think it was Beaver Lake. I don't remember what place you came in there, but you were up there because you were getting coverage, obviously. I, that's when I first, you were third. Okay, there it is. You know, of course you do. <laughs> I, I, I remember I remember that. I we're kind of we're kind of losing you about there. that event, and people say, you know, you might not catch the same bass twice. The first day of practice, I pulled to an area. How about still got me? Oh, yeah. It's I just, think I think fellas, that it might be a location. Out a little bit. So maybe if we, it seems to be when you, if we want to try and turn that on and turn it off again. No, turn the video off. Well, I want to try and keep it on definitely if we can. 
But the but I think if maybe it it, it seems to be when you start moving a lot, Jeff. Yeah. It seems to okay, be the. <laughs> be, do the mannequin challenge mannequin for challenge. the end. Yeah, the, the end. Yeah. You, you got, I'll just I'll try to talk like a, I'll talk like a ventriloquist. Right, That's actually it. perfect right now. So sixteen, uh, <laughs> Beaver Lake. <laughs> so I, I tell you what's I tell you what's crazy about that is I wheeled into an area in practice uh, like the first day of practice, like the end of the day, and I caught a bass, um, like a three pounder. It was, it's a good one at Beaver that time. You know, for that for that particular lake. Um, and then I rolled in some hooks on some baits and then I kept going, had a few more bites. That first bass that I caught had a black spot on her head and a spot on her tail. I wheeled in there the first day of that tournament. And that's the first fish I caught in the same exact, almost <laughs> the exact same cast. I caught that same fish in that something. That's incredible. It was an incredible event. You know, I really, I mean, I, Beaver has really gotten to be a good lake, you know, and I think there'll be more events to go there in the future. Yeah, man. And, and again, back to it, that's when, that's when I first, you know, kind of noticed Jeff Sprague. And then now with the resurgence here, um, you coming out swinging in the BPT, my, my question to you is, are you, are you noticing benefits of this coverage, of this uh, exposure? Is it, is it too early to tell? You know, I mean, oh, absolutely. I've already noticed, you know, there's, there's been benefits of it, um, you know, but as far as, you know, changing anything or, or it, you know, is it affected anything? No, it, by no means it's not. I think it's still really early. I think uh, a lot of people in the industry are sitting back and watching what we're doing. Um, and I just really, I, I know we're setting precedents. I know that, that the, the Bass Pro Tour is changing uh, the face of bass fishing in the direction that it's going. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit, you know, a little bit more. I'm sure Edwin touched on that and anybody that you guys are going to have in the future will touch on that. Um, there's no, you know, nothing with, wrong with the way that tournaments have been done for the last 25, 30 years, but I think we're pushing it in a different direction. Yeah. And, and, and we're enjoying it. We're, we're, we're enjoying it. The, can I ask you what, I want you to remove yourself from being a professional angler for a moment. Okay. And I want you okay. to look at the world of bass fishing right now through a fan's eyes. Okay? And and obviously there's we have three choices now. You know, there's there's three cereals on the shelf in the morning now when we get up. And we make a choice. Now, from a fan's perspective, what do you think might be done differently? to make this more an enjoyable experience for the fans. And I'm talking about all three leagues. What could all three leagues do to make it more enjoyable experience for the fans together? Collectively? Well, the, the first thing that we've done in the last couple of years is obviously integrated the live, uh, you know, the live following the ability to, to go, you know, for the, for them to broadcast live and you and people to follow along with us on the water that is first and foremost the probably the greatest thing that we've uh come with uh, that it allows the fans to interact and actually see what's going on on the water with, with guys who are putting in the hours on behind the rod and reel you know um i think that's been the will be the biggest thing that we continue to to move forward with um is is allowing people to see exactly what and how the fish are being caught um and i think that you're gonna see some guys you see it get away from just catching try to catch five you know um five is always impressive the best but if that's the case then how come it was never the 10 biggest that you could catch you know because truthfully you're allowed to keep five a day and in, 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 in across the country so if you got a team tournament it would be 10 bass well you know we've we kind of dumbed it down and made it to five. Um, and I think that we can change the sport of bass fishing again. You know, if you look back at the 60s, excuse me, the 60s, when they were hauling string bass in on stringers, you know, over their shoulder, and they would weigh in, you know, 10, 15 yeah. bass, whatever. Uh, some of them would be all golden-eyed, dead. You know, sure. and now we obviously try to preserve them. But um, the way we're just ch – the way we're pushing the sport in another direction to conserve it for the future generations is uh, and 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 show that to show that because we have more pressure now on our bodies of water we got high school 
college, those, and there's a big tournaments, you know, two, 300 boaters, you know, and every weekend that's going down. So I just think it's a great format as far as that goes. And I know I'm kind of getting off subject with where the original question goes, but that's okay. everything in me is just trying to get people to truly believe and understand that we're just trying to make the sport better for everyone, not just for the professional anglers, but for the future guys that are coming up to catch bass. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that they'll see that. That's what, I, you know, that's what, back to the question is they see what we're trying to do. Yeah, it, it, it's right there in front of them. The more live okay. coverage, the additional exposure. You guys were just on fire. There, there it is. The, you know what I, what I, the one thing I don't like about with the with the three leagues right now is I don't, and I'm talking about fans. I don't like that fans are side choosing, mm-hmm. and I don't like. Yeah. I don't like that the organizations are stacking. So I don't like side choosing, and I don't like stacking. That's not fair well, to the fans, nor the anglers. You're, you're, you're right, and and you're going to have hardcore FLW guys. You're going to have hardcore bass guys, and you're going to have these guys who are hardcore BPT guys. Um, I think that, in all fairness, we're all bass fishermen. We all want the, you know, we all want to do the same thing. Um, but it's just like anything else in life like i always kind of resort back to this you can't make everybody happy there's always going to be somebody out there who cries to their mama you know <laughs> or, or, to, or to, to, the, to somebody about they don't like it it's not good and and that's that's just what you know and i mean you can't make everybody happy man there's going to be somebody watching this broadcast like i like this yeah because why well, you know but screw them you, you just gotta have open mind it you know and, and that's just what it is. It, it doesn't matter if we're talking politics or we're talking bass fishing. Um, you just got to have an open mind and, and, and be willing to change because the world we live in changes and, and bass fishing is changing. Um, and we can all get along. All the, all, the, all the organizations can work together. But I just think that uh, without being hurting anybody's feelings, you got organizations that have made a lot of money off the anglers for a very long time. Yeah. You know, and. And when you start getting into people's money and you start cutting into their pocketbooks and, and you know, then, then you start really hurting people's feelings and they start getting cutthroat. And I feel like maybe that's, that's kind of happened. And I don't, I don't think this is anything all that new either. I mean, we've got a new league, so there's, there's, there's more to talk about, but there's always been FLW guys and, and bass guys. Not as much as now. Not as much not as now, as, but there's more. But they all, there was always an argument before, too. It's riddled, it's smaller, riddled with side choosers. Yeah, and it's new. Riddled. It'll go away. It's, it doesn't need yep. to be that way. It doesn't. Look, I, agree. I love bass fishing, dude. That's what I do. I love bass fishing. That's why I have a bass fishing talk show. You love bass fishing. You're able to make a living at bass fishing. That's why you do it, right? And yes, no, absolutely. It's just all bass fish, you know. It's like the Beatles said, "All you need is love. All we need is bass fishing." That's right, right? That's it. It's that damn That's simple. It. It's that damn simple. That's it, you know. <laughs> the only thing I see is I have more bass fishing I don't know. to watch just... on a weekly basis now. That's the only difference for me. More yeah. bass fishing. That's, That's great. Right. I mean, you know who benefits from this? Let's be honest with each other. The damn phone companies benefit from this because you yes. got to go up your data plan. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Everybody's unlimited now. Ex- yep. Exactly. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. <laughs> and who does we not benefit? The owners that. of the companies we all work for. Those are the ones that don't benefit. Because <laughs> we get nothing done. Exactly. <laughs> hey, um, uh, I guess we better talk some, like, technique or something or people will be mad at me. So. Shit. <laughs> you were doing a really cool thing and it's something that's not talked about a lot but we all do it as bass fishermen and it's sight fishing or i should say fishing for spawning fish that we can't see yep i mean i do more of that than i actually do sight fishing for spawning fish just because i fish dirt but uh, yeah, and, and I think a lot of people do that, and they don't even realize that they're doing it in the spring, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Of course okay? it does, that, and they're the dummies. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, no, it's not that they're dumb. They just, like, we. I'm able to, I wasn't able to grow my whole life on on the water. You know, I grew up at the lake. Um, when I stayed at the lake, we lived, you know, six miles from the lake. I could take the farm truck down there and fish. That's That was my, you know, fish 
whatever boat bass tube I could paddle out there and fish off the bank. That was my deal. <laughs> so I've been able to do that since, since I was a kid, and I've able to I've been able to learn a lot of things that most people don't get the opportunity to because I was just a dumb tree kid. You know, I mean that's what we had to do. Some kids have skateboards. I had a dang rod and reel, son. You know, that's all there was to it. And and, and so, long story short, um, the time on the water. And I, you know, I tell the story. I got to fish with Stacy King one time, and uh, I drew him. I was a non boater, and he was a boater when I was when I first started bass fishing. Um, and Stacy, I would throw up there, and I would catch a bass. And, and it was it was a spawn, and I didn't know, you know, I didn't know a whole lot about you know a new lake. This was at like Lake Hartwell. Okay. Um, and, and Stacy threw up, he, I would throw up there and catch like a two and a half pounder and it'd be the male. And Stacy King would look at me and he'd go, where'd you catch that bass? And I said, right up there next to that bush. On, he's like, left side or right side? I'm like, left side. Stacy King would throw up there three or four times and he'd catch like a four pound female. All right. And he might come back through there three or four times throughout the day before he caught it, but he'd catch it. Well, he's smart. You know, he's done that long enough to know he knew. Um, what he was doing. We, we, could, we couldn't see him. But he, he was, you know, he'd let me catch the males and put them in the box. And then he'd catch the females. <laughs> so he, you know, he's a, you know, and, and that's, you know, that's a valuable lesson, something that I took away from that. And, and you know, I didn't, you know, smart man, you know, and it, it just, it is what it is. But, uh, you know, we basically, the technique that I was doing in Conroe was exactly that. Um, I would throw, basically had to grab each of a, of a bank multiple directions and multiple casts because the water's so dirty. You can't, the fish see the bank, you can't see the fish. You're, all you're doing truthfully is dragging it across their bed until you hit them in the right angle where you get in that sweet spot that they're really territorial over. And then they pick it up and they take it off their bed and you have to hook them. It's, it's all, and it's textbook. And, Bird dogging them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. And, and, and going back, I mean, and again, I just want to say, you know, we're dumb in the sense that we haven't learned that yet. So people sure. ha- haven't taken into account that they're actually catching spawning fish that they can't see. Once, yes. once you learn that, that's where it separates and you're able to capitalize. It, it, exactly. And what, what you, and you know, something that goes into that, that people don't really understand that you have to really understand to get it is it's just like sight fishing. When you can see them, you can go down a stretch of bank in a pocket and, and it'd be 50 yards of nothing. There'd be, it looked good, but there'd be no bass. And then you go to one little 20 yard stretch and there'll be seven beds right there. And every bass wants to be right there in that 20 yard little stretch. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. It sure does. So yep. when you can't see that with, when you can't see that with your eyeballs, then obviously you have to find it with your rod and your bait. And when you find it, recognize it and be able to truly pick it apart and that's all I was able to do there is find those little key areas and pick them apart. Yeah, and that it was, was a perfect. great way of explaining it. Yeah. Absolutely, it was yeah. perfect too. And Edwin even talked a little bit about a, a similar principle. He hit that big fish in the back with the chatter chicken when he was winding the vibrating jig, and then he tossed the drop shot in there and caught it. You know, so yep. I mean, there, there's another. Uh, well, it's 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 uh, so when I'm there, I, it might make it'll probably make the TV show. So you see me. Um, I'm power pulled down. You, it's probably not on. You didn't catch it on live because it happened so fast. But I throw up to where I saw one kind of wake around and spin around a little bit under the water, just move the water, and I catch it. It's a four pound female. All okay. right. Um, and I never pick my power poles up, and I'm casting around, and I'm looking, and she's literally, I can touch where I'm flipping with the tip of my rod, and I see it. I see a little another little movement, and I literally just drop my bait right back to it. And catch the male off the bed. Can't see it, but I know what it is. And immediately hits the water. He swims off with I catch him, boat him, weigh him, let him go. But that's what's cool about it is, you know, not being able to see them, but truly know they're there. Yeah. Awesome. Now, does that does that does that bum me out kind of that you you can't box those males because it seems to help sometimes, right? You know, it, you're right. It, it, you're right. It does because a lot of times, uh, you you know, you need to pull the male off a of bed to get a female to eat. And sometimes, if you pull the male, the female won't pull up there. So it's kind of a it's a crapshoot, to be honest with you. Sometimes, um, you know, and, and I've had a lot of questions. Do you think you caught some of the same fish twice? Mm-hmm. Can't say I didn't, but I'm gonna tell you right now. I looked in all my fish. I look in their mouths when I catch them, and I didn't see any hook marks in almost any of my fish's mouths, which tells me that. They were just—they were all fresh fish, and they were just piling in there by the hour. It was an incredible, uh, incredible week, 
even with the weather. And I think if it had been warmer, it would have been an all-out slugfest for the females. Wow. That, I mean, and hey, and it all ended up okay. I mean, it's pretty damn good, dude. Second place. Sure. <laughs> that's, that's all right. <laughs> we wanted that. Hey, but we wanted that. Hey, we wanted that big old trophy, man. I ain't going to lie. I know you, you did. Know, I we know. got to tote it home. Just keep that, uh, keep that consistency going, man. Keep, keep it going. I think yeah. good things are going to happen for you. You know, uh, fingers crossed, brother. Fingers and, crossed. And speaking of good things happening, I, I first off want to thank you for a couple things. First off, uh, and to remind everybody that uh, the good people at Gene LaRue and Jeff have donated the $50 giveaway today. All you have to do, if you have not already, is like and share the live Facebook feed. Nicole Dorr, Bass Fishing Supermodel. She's coming on the show at the end uh, here, and she's going to give it away. She's going to give away the, awesome. the Gene LaRue prize pack. Now, also... This is news to the entire Bass Galaxy right now. So here's what – now, guys, can you put the phone number up on the on the screen? Let's, let's load up the phone here, okay, because you are going to have an opportunity to win compliments of – he's like Santa Claus. Yeah, man. He is. He's like an elf on the shelf. <laughs> off-season Santa Claus. Yeah, he's off-season yeah. Santa. He sure, he sure is. I know him, Santa. Um, a Costa <laughs> Del Mar giveaway, Correct. Yep. A Costa Del Mar giveaway. So you can call 520-214-2277. And how should they win this? What should we do, Jeff? Let's make this up right now. How how can we how can we win this? How's the caller gonna win? What do you think? Man, I mean, you give me some ideas. I'm just I'm just helping you guys. I just I just want to hear your your ideas. I mean I sat back and watched the show. You guys got the coolest ideas. I'm just an old fisherman. Well, I was thinking about taking the rest of the night off and just handing this thing over to you. <laughs> no, you know, hey, if you can, hey, let's get them on the phone and let them sing some big 80s hairband lyrics or something. Do yes. Something fun, okay, know? there okay. there we go. All you got to do is call up 520-214-2277, bust out one of your favorite jams, and uh, yes. Jeff's going to judge. If he feels you're worthy, you win the Costa Del Mar prize giveaway let's get some rat viewers whatever you want whatever you want load them up 520-214-BASS all right there it is so in the meantime while the phones are, while we get some calls in here load them up we'll hold them up and we are going to get to you but let's uh let's mess around a little bit what do you think sounds good all right now i am going to give you uh a choice here okay so we can either play um it sounds dirty, but it's not. Okay, we could play that. Uh, we could play. Um, we could play the Jeff Sprague TV commercial during the Super Bowl. We can play that, or we could play um, the bass fishing trivia game. Let's play It Sounds Dirty, But It's Not. That sounds way more fun. Okay, great. But choice. you're not getting out of these other ones. Just letting you know. Oh. All right, just just letting you know. <laughs> So we're going to play Sounds Dirty, but it's not. It's called uh, Let's Talk About the First Thing That Pops Up. That's the name of the game. Are you ready? Do we got some got swanky, uh, swankity swanks? Oh. Here it is. Are you ready? It's time for the edition of Let's Talk About the First Thing That Pops Up. The word to you, Jeff, is glory hole. Glory hole. What does it relate to in bass fishing? Sounds dirty, but that's it's like not. A, that's like a pipe. That's like a pipe that you find uh, a little washout or, or something that's that's the sweet spot where you don't have to move. You just pull right up there, drop them old poles, them power poles, and just continuously hit it and 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 make money off of what you what you snap into. Uh, perfect. Way way more than we needed, but you definitely got that one. The Dutch oven. What is the Dutch oven in bass fishing? <laughs> I don't know. The, I don't know. I'm, I don't own it. I don't even know what the Dutch would. Is that a bait? I don't know. What it, I don't know. No, <laughs> it's when you're on that flip bite, and it's about 115 degrees, and there's uh, no wind, and you just keep going through that Dutch oven <laughs> until you get bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the Dutch oven in bassing. I'm going to write that on my boards so I remember it. <laughs> uh, the bump and grind. What's the bump and grind in bass fishing? Uh, 
The, I mean, the the bump and grind. I mean, I, when I think of bump and grind, I'm thinking of being on beds. So, I mean, if they're up there getting ready to bump and grind, I'm I'm going to be looking for them, or I'm going to be trying to find them up there with their backs out of water. There it is. So, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. They're doing the bump and grind. <laughs> the old extends. The old extends. Is that a question? Yeah. What's that, that in bass that fishing? A question? The extends. The extends. Yeah. I mean, I don't use those telescoping rods that people used to use, but they've got, got like an eight-foot rod and it extends. Yeah. You know, for flipping and stuff. Thank I've you very much. I've never go. needed a rod that long that long before. Yeah, you're not compensating for anything. You're a good man. Excellent. <laughs> no. Yes, there it is. Very good. The old isolated bush. What's the old isolated bush? <laughs> The isolated bush is the sweet spot. You want to put it right in the middle of that bush. You sure yeah. do. Yeah. Absolutely. You Jigging do. the bush is worth two in the box. <laughs> uh, the, the old feng shui. The old feng shui. The, the feng shui. Yeah, the old feng I shui. I, 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 I don't know. What is your feng shui? The feng shui is just basically. I don't. I, that's the deal. Like, your feng shui is your deal. Like, you know, you were on that, um, you you were on that feng shui, dude, when you were catching those bedding fish that you couldn't see. That was your feng shui. See, I always, I, see, I always just say I slip off into the spirit world. I, I like it. Thank you. I like you that know, too. You like that's that's my feng shui. I slip off into the spirit world, and they can't see me anymore because I'm catching them. I'm I'm throwing down on them. <laughs> yeah, exactly, dude. I, I like this guy even more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's amazing. He did good. I think Pretty you good. did. I think you did good. Well, sounds get the, and maybe I can get second or third place out of that deal yeah. or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds dirty, but it's not. That's plain and simple. Plain yeah, and right. simple. Good job. Congratulations, right. Jeff Sprague's first ever bass fishing uh, game show. Right there. <laughs> first ever time for that game as well. Yeah, but, yeah. I like it. I don't know. I think it's just something. It's something that's decent. Uh, <laughs> it's it's something. Hey, um, so like, what's a what's just a a jam, dude? Like, what's your jam? What is that song? What is the deal? So, for like the past five years, when I was fishing the tour, okay, the first tournament of the year, I've roomed with Jason Reyes the whole time I've been on tour, <laughs> and. Every year, the first day of the tournament, he would start an iPad, and he would go to Skid Row, I Remember You, and I don't know why, but it's a live version on YouTube. Gotcha. And he would hit play, and he slides it. He would slide it under my door um, of, my, of my room, and it would wake <laughs> me up for the first tournament of the year every single year for five years in a row. This is the first year he didn't dab me because I was fishing Bass Pro Tour, but it's a live version version on youtube of skid row singing i'll remember you it's like 10 minutes long or something but it's the <laughs> most badass jam ever recorded live and i recommend everybody to go put another like or another view on that thing on youtube it's that, awesome awesome i remember you live it's a good ballad yeah, yeah absolutely now can you do a metal scream like i know you like the no 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 I, you can't no i mean everybody like, i don't have no i'm no everybody can do a primal scream Let's hear yours then. Let's let's uh -oh. hear. It. Well, I, I'm on, I'm on I'm on the air. <laughs> Ginge, can I get some? Can I get some? Uh, give me some some primal scream music, please. How about a little stand up and shout? If I'm gonna do it, you're gonna do it. You ready? Go stand up and shout. Let's go stand up and shout. There it is. Perfect. You see it? You're feeling it? You see what I'm saying? Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Stand up and shout! Stand up and shout! <laughs> yes! Okay. Your turn. Jin started again. Take it from the beginning. <laughs> Give me
Give me your best metal scream. Are you ready? Yeah, oh, hell yeah. What are you talking about? Yes! Wow! Holy cow! Damn, dude! You got pipes. Yeah, y'all know how to take y'all know how to take a guy out of his comfort zone. No, no, but we're, the goal is to make you comfortable after all this. <laughs> And, and forgive, good sport, though. Forgive man. me, my voice is still good. a little rough after spending a week at the Ike and Ellie's a, a couple weeks ago. So, oh, nice. <laughs> so, but dude, you you absolutely nailed that. You, you did you did amazing. Um, I feel I feel good about it. <laughs> which further reinforces the point that you are obviously a man of mental toughness. You are obviously a man of mental toughness. I mean. You even state that as one of your strengths as, as far as your fishing strengths, mental toughness. And sure. I want to tell you how I know that you're full of mental toughness. Hey, Andy, do you, uh, do you have the, um, Jeff's promo shot from the MLF? Look at that. Look at that face. That's a guy I want on my side in a bar fight. Not only mental toughness, but just straight old mean mug and toughness. I mean, that's that is the, the face of that's mental the, toughness. That's the face of mental toughness right there. It's a post. You know, you know, but, but dude, you guys got to realize something. Like, those guys don't know me that well. So, like, I had to roll in there and to put on this, like, game face. Like, these guys are all smiling and having a good time. I'm all like, I'm going to be a I'm just gonna be hard nosed, you know. It. Just I love it. Smile, and that, and that way they'd be like, they don't know how to take me. They're like, is this guy for real? Is he being like, is he, is he mean? Is he, is he nice? Or, or what, what's the deal? And then, because once you get to know me, you're like, that dude's just a straight cut up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's awesome. I mean, that's a sure indicator though of mental toughness. I don't care what you say. No, I don't care what you say. <laughs> Well, how we doing back there, kids? How's it going back there, guys? Okay, we're gonna keep going. Keep them loading up. I don't think the viewers want to sing. No, well, yeah, well, I, they're kind of scared. <laughs> There's a couple of them hanging Just on. Just call but I want, in. We'll we'll make you do something. Yeah, I mean, it's for Costa Maybe Sunglasses. You if you're scared to sing, we're not gonna leave the same two guys hanging yeah, it's, forever. It's true. Five two zero two one four twenty two seventy seven. We will not embarrass you that bad. We promise. We promise. A hundred percent. So, bud, I mean, an exciting time in bass fishing for everyone. Again, the fans, and especially you, jumping into into a whole new a whole new league, a, a whole new format. It's talk to me a little bit about. Was there any nervousness at all about about making the switch, making the transition? Was there at all? No, no, no nervousness about the actual transition itself. Uh, excitement. Um, would 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 take the role over nervousness in, in a heartbeat it's just to be a you know the way i viewed it to be honest with you was we're we're make, we're gonna make bass fishing history there's been no changes in bass fishing in the past you know 30 years or more and um you know five fish limits and we're fixing to you know we're fixing them we're fixing to change the industry we're gonna shake it up and i think that's exactly what we're doing um and i think that you're gonna see you know uh, with the conservative mindset in today's world that it's good i think that we're gonna it'll be accepted a lot more widely um and even to be broadcast over a a, a, a more broad spectrum accepted meaning like when you go into a bar you're going to your chili's applebee's and you sit down and you see a tv expect to see the bass pro tour major league fishing on that tv at some point it's pretty it's pretty I exciting so. yeah i mean it, it, it really is you i know, know the, the only thing i i'd like to see i love the live coverage but I'm hoping that at some point it can become more interactive to where, I mean, because all these cameras are out there. They're all filming the whole day, correct? Correct. So it would be really great if you could actually click on the angler you wanted to watch throughout the day. Virtual angler. That's the only thing I, I, I could say would improve yeah. it. And I, I think that would probably be um, 
something that may be coming in the future. I can't answer that for, for sure because that's a you know that's the IT guys that and they. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I've been around uh, uh, some 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 filming and some things you know before in the past, and most people in the industry have. I'm here to tell you right now the amount of equipment that the that Bass Pro Tour and Major League Fishing have to do the production is state of the art. It is second to none. They can go and cover the Super Bowl with the amount of coverage with the amount of equipment that they have to do these bass fish, that, that we had to do our bass fishing. Now it will be unprecedented when it hits the air it will be something like we've never seen before i'm just telling you it is going to be special yeah. awesome amazing and we're all looking forward to it yeah. hey uh, it's already good let's say like we it. let's take let's take these calls let's get them 520-214-2277 it's uh it's time it's a chance for you to win the costa prize compliments of costa and jeff sprague uh, and it, what what's what's happening here you're good. You got him. I didn't hear the phone ring. <laughs> <laughs> Our producer hey. is missing every clue, every cue tonight. Is that a rotary I, phone? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Wait. Let's take the first call. Who's the, who's the first call? Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. Yeah. Go ahead. The fish on the line. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hey. What's going on? Wait, what's, you tell me what's going on. You're on the air with Stray Cast and Jeff Sprague. What's happening? Who's calling? Where are you calling from? No, I'm from uh, Wilson, Texas, Brian Elder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. What's that mean, Jeff? That's a, you gotta watch that. You got to watch that boy right there. I've, I've seen him on Facebook. Ah! <laughs> so are you going to try and win a Costa Prize or – yeah, I'm I'm looking for it. What I need to do? Well, you got to sing you got to sing your favorite song and if uh if Jeff, if Jeff deems you worthy, you win across the prize. It's that easy. Brag, name the song and I'm sing, but I've got to know it. Okay, well, do you know I remember you by Skid Row? <laughs> I, I don't. Well, what name me a damn song you know then. I'm making this as easy as I can, guy. <laughs> what you sing us tell him to sing us his favorite song. Yeah, sing us your favorite song. I've got her friends. Oh, my. The whiskey drowns. And- wow. I, I mean, he's cutting out a Brooks. little, but it, it did. It sounded like, like angels. <laughs> it did like sound like angels. angels. It did sound like Fergie and angels. I guess, uh, I, I guess we got to. Uh, we got, we got no, well, we're going to, let's take another call and we'll judge. So that's, uh, that, that's it. Uh, what's your name again, caller? Ryan Elder from Wills Point, Texas. Okay. Ryan Elder Ryan from Elder. Texas. That's our first contestant. All right. Now we're going to keep, keep your ears on. Cause we're going to let you know, Jeff's got to get a couple more to judge here. You're on. All right, bud. Thanks for calling. Thanks for calling. All right. All right. Let's take another one. Let's take another one. We got a fish on the line. How you doing? Hey. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Who's calling? Where are you calling from? This Olga Foster. Hey, how you doing there, Olga Foster? I'm good. I'm Jeff's big fan. All right. What do you want to sing to Jeff tonight? What do you want to win his heart with? I don't want to sing Listen, I I don't want I only know the Barney song. Okay. And I don't think he wants to hear that. Oh yeah, he kids. does. Yes, we do. Yes, Absolutely we do. he does. <laughs> do do you like to oat 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 opals and bonobos? I know that uh Barney song and Iples and Bananas. Hey, I'll sing the shark song with uh with Jeff. Okay. Baby Shark? Yeah, please do. Please do. Go ahead. Hey Go Jeff. Ahead. Try it again. I don't know how to sing that song. I think you got to turn your. I got. You There's gotta, a lot of lyrics in that song. Yeah, it can be confusing. Just sing the baby shark part already. You got to sing baby shark. Oh no! But oh, hold on, we're gonna sing baby shark. Hold on. Okay. She's calling in reinforcements. Yes, it's Olga Foster. Yep. There, there it is. There's the baby shark. Sorry, Jeff. You, I just want my dinner. 
<laughs> is, is, he did is this it. happening in another room of your house? Is this is this a fixed call? <laughs> there is a, no. there's four kids in this house. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank okay. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you, guys. That those are those are all great. That's awesome. Okay. Super awesome. You know every one of these kids, Jeff. <laughs> I, I, yes, I yes I do, and they are they have fantastic parents. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for Clearly. calling. I I think you might win. I'm not sure though. I I, I think you. I, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take two more. Let's take two more because I know we have that one that's been holding for us too the whole time, Andy. So let's make sure we get that one. And then who we got now? Fish on the line. Hello. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you doing? Where are you calling from? Who's calling? Well, uh, I'm very reluctant to tell you guys who I am or who, who – I don't want to you know, let Jeff know exactly who I am. But uh, he's going to know who I am by the song that I – Please. Okay. Please do. Let us have it. You have the stage. And I just I, – I, I just wrote it, by the way. I, I like <laughs> okay. it even more. Okay. Jeff Sprague, that's a fish landing violation, two-minute penalty. And next I'm going to give you a fish release violation, two-minute penalty. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think uh, you Sounds just, like a country you, song. Yeah, you just about nailed it. That, hey, that guy wins nothing. Okay. He wins nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've been disqualified. Who, who's, who's calling, Jeff? I think you know who it is. That is Aaron Brashears. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Aaron Bashirs, I'm calling him out on Straight Cast Live right now. Okay. He needs to. He, he's yeah. listen, Aaron. Do us a favor. I didn't say my name was Aaron. Now, come on. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You know, I feel dead. that there's potentially very many penalties in your future, young man. <laughs> <laughs> wait a second. Oh wait, uh, Andy. I see the. Re- yep, there is a restraining order on Aaron. Andy, you do have to hang up on Aaron immediately. <laughs> Yes. Aaron, thanks for calling. Uh, you did not win. That was outstanding. Hey, man, you guys have a great show. Thanks, and, Aaron. Uh, you keep watching Major League Fish Bass Pro Tour, and you keep watching Jeff Sprague, man. He's a star. <laughs> thanks, man. Uh, thanks, dude. Thanks for calling. All right, thanks, one more Aaron. call. The guy that's been holding the whole time, let's, uh, let's hear from him. Oh, he actually got a real. Go ahead, caller. You're on the line. Welcome to Stray Cass. Hello. Uh oh. Welcome to Stray Cass. Hello. Okay, he's not there. I guess we lost that one. So I guess we got between Ryan, Olga, and the guy who just had the restraining order. So he's not going to win. So who wins? We 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 have to give that deal to Ryan Elder. He's he brought the he brought his A game and he he put some heart and soul into that friends in low places, um, and he does have some friends in low places, and I still accept him. You know he's still a Facebook friend, so we'll 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 be more than happy to hook him up with some Costa swag. <laughs> nice, there it nice. is. So do, Ryan, send your uh, information to the direct message of Straycast. We'll get that over. Uh, to the to the good people over there, co-star to Jeff. However, it's going to happen. And congratulations, congratulations, Ryan. Boom, he won. Ryan Elder. And thank you, Costa Del Mar. And thank you, Jeff Spray. That's pretty cool. We don't have a lot of hair uh, hair band fans in our in our audience. That's here. okay. I mean, right. they, we had one guy that didn't call in. I know he would have won. <laughs> I know. I know that guy would have won. <laughs> so hey, we're going to give you a chance. To win something now. Before we go tonight, we're going to give you a chance to win something. Okay? All right. You want to try? That's what we're here for. Might as well win something. I didn't win at Conroe. (laughs) uh, You've played Jeopardy before at home, right? I watched it once on TV, but I was bored. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, get ready to get bored right now because we're going to play straight (laughs) cast Jeopardy. So basically, it follows the, the same principle you have to answer in a question form and what you are playing for is a stray cast t-shirt okay yes all right now these are they're actual answers to this so it has to do with bass fishing trivia okay okay are you ready here we go yes 
in Jeopardy form answer. The booger man is what type of lure? The booger man, Jeff Sprague, is what type of lure? What is a Jean LaRue who daddy? <laughs> <laughs> That's a wrong answer. <laughs> the the booger man is a buzz bait. The booger man is a famous buzz bait. Right. I'm from East Texas. So they they catch him there too. They don't make him anymore. It's a good one. They originated in East Texas. It's a loud one. Just made that up. Uh. Okay, you want to play Gene Larue? Let's play Gene Larue. Here we go. It is easy to tell when this Gene Larue teammate is on a flipping bite because his shorts get even tighter. <laughs> Who is Mr. Tommy Biffle? Mr. Tommy Biffle, that is correct, because he packs his pockets with Biffle bugs. His <laughs> shorts get even tighter. Okay. This two, this angler is the winner of the inaugural 2012 MLF Challenge Cup on Amistad. It's a tough one. Yeah, because it was 2012 and I was like nine years old. So? I didn't even have a phone then. No <laughs> internet. There was no internet in Texas yet. <laughs> I cheated too. I looked it up. But I remember. Uh, okay, who. so who is... Um, it's got to be one of the founders. So it's who is Kelly Jordan? No. But it's it, it is Brent Ayler though, so you're exactly God. right. You're exactly right. You got West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> you're exactly right. All right. Ooh, we got another phone call. We got a. Who could this be? Hello. We're. Hey guys, it's me, Marty Stone. How you doing? <laughs> hey, what's up, Marty? Hey, you guys care if I take over this game show from here? I would love that, Marty. Please feel free to do so. So, Marty, take it away. Hey, Jeff. Good to see you here on the Straycast version of Jeopardy. Jeff, tomatoes are not vegetables. They're actually fruits. Mans used to make jelly worms named after fruits. Bass and trolls live under bridges. Which one of these colors is not a fruit? Green pumpkin, scuppernong, or Okeechobee crawl? Which of these colors is not a fruit? Green pumpkin, scuppernong, or Okeechobee crawl? What is Okeechobee crawl? That is incorrect. I mean, that's correct. <laughs> Which one is it, Marty? Correct and incorrect. Okay. It's both correct and correct. They are none of them, none of them are fruits. And Listen, none... to a bass, green pumpkin is a fruit. I promise you, ask one. So I guess Guaranteed. we'll give him that seeds. answer. I guess we'll give him that answer. Congratulations, Jeff Sprague. I'll see you at stage three. That was, that was Marty Stone. Thanks, Marty. Wow. That's kind of a surprise. Uh, I love Marty Stone. Yeah, that was cool. He's, he, he's a great dude. I love Marty, too. It's, I'm pretty honored that he called in my dumb show. I'm going to tell you that <laughs> right now. Uh, that was pretty cool. He loves us right there. shows. We got to, you got two more chances to win the Stray Cash shirt, okay? It's all or okay. nothing. It's all or nothing here. This famous California largemouth is famous not only for its size, but for its distinct marking. Name that bass. Who is Miss Dottie? Who is Miss Dottie is absolutely correct. Jeff Sprague, you are one away. You are one away. One away. I feel the pressure, boys. One away, I feel guy. The pressure. One away. Which angler caught the largest specimen ever in MLF history flipping? The oh, largest. God. Um, it had to be, who is Hackney? He is absolutely amazing. Jeff Sprague, you nailed it. He flipped up an alligator. Remember that? Yes. Absolutely. Boom. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Sprague is the winner of a Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television t-shirt.
Yes. BB Tish me BB. You just want a damn <laughs> straight cash shirt. Hey, can I get that in a medium husky? Yes. <laughs> a shmedium? Yeah, okay. You mean shmedium. <laughs> a schmusky. A shmedium <laughs> schmusky. Yes, absolutely, dude. <laughs> hey, uh, man, I, I had an amazing time with you. I'm not going to kid you. I enjoy myself, boys. Dude, I mean, this is pretty cool. You, uh, you are welcome here anytime. I hope you know that. Well, when y'all get really bored and you don't have anybody else fun to interview, y'all just give me a holler. We'll we'll figure something out to, to conversate about. I always got something dumb to talk about. I'm, us too. Let's do another show yeah. tomorrow. I'll call you about 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, go ahead and call it. If I don't answer, just leave a message. <laughs> there it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff, you, anything you want to say to the Bass Fishing Galaxy, to your fans, your sponsors before hey. we get out of here? You know, hey, guys, we talked about it a minute ago. We're all bass fishermen. doesn't matter what, what league you support. BASS, FLW, Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour. We're all bass fishermen. We all just got to – let's all make the sport better. Let's all look to the future and see what we can do to make it better um, and be nice to each other on the water. We, it, the lakes are too small to, to, uh, to not be that way. And, uh, hey, holler at all your local anglers. Holler at all your pros. We're all guys just like you, and we can all learn from each other. Absolutely. No choosing sides, no stacking, and always stay in the feng shui. Feng Shui. Just keep it in the middle of the bush. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, one more Bass Galaxy round of applause for Jeff Sprague. Yes. Awesome. Thanks, dude. Now we're gonna Thanks, Jeff. we're gonna have the uh, Bass Fishing Supermodel come on. She's gonna give away some uh, Jean Larue stuff. So thank you for that too. Thanks, guys. Appreciate right. it. That's that's Jeff Sprague right there. Amazing. It was amazing right there. Hey, uh, you know, with everything. So- Everything that's that's happening here. This was like a very busy show. Did you notice that? Busy. Yeah, yes. I think busy is a is a good is a good word for it. Yes. It's so it's there. It was there's tons of um, not necessarily chaos or disorder, but more. Not so much. No, yeah. there's been more. <laughs> there's definitely been yeah. more chaos and yeah. disorder. But the the fact of the matter is, it all works out. You know why it works out? Because the camera's running. Because Stray Cast is an amazing place to work <laughs> out to get free stuff every Wednesday night. That's right. It sure Easiest. is. Easiest. It's the easiest place in the galaxy By far. to win 50 bucks worth of free stuff on a Wednesday night. And we got Nicole Door Bass Fishing Super Model coming up to give away the prize. JP, have you gone through the uh, the process of the elimination of the uh, rotisserie chicken randomizer? Can you pronounce the last name? <laughs> you you got a but name. Don't do it right yeah, now. Yeah, don't say it yet. I mean, you got a name, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You got you got one. You got a name. But is it? Nicole says she needs ten. She needs ten minutes. She needs ten. She don't got ten minutes. What we does she think this is? We're getting. We got all kinds of stuff to do still. This is the number five. I can't talk at G not for ten minutes. Yeah, this. I, I so I think that what we're gonna have to do is just have JP give away the uh, Jean Larue prize back. Nicole, if we're still on, she can pop in later. JP, the hip hop superman. I mean, they've been waiting for this. Yeah. So we got Ryan that won the. Not you, Ryan. You keep looking at me. I didn't win when I say Ryan, but Ryan won the Costa Del Mar, and now the winner of the Jean Larue fifty dollar prize pack is. Do it in medieval. Medieval voice, please. Tanner Pretty. <laughs> Tanner Pretty, you have won the Jean LaRue prize pack for tonight. <laughs> yes! I'm still not sure what that name was. I don't even know what he said, but I loved it. Tana, he sounded Game Tana of Thrones. Pretty? I, you made me dream of the Khaleesi. That was good. It's kind of like P. Diddy, but Tanner Pretty. <laughs> Tanner Pretty. Tanner Pretty. Like P-R-I-D-D-Y? Pretty? Exactly. Not the Khaleesi? No. The Khaleesi didn't win? No. Damn it. I wanted her to come get the Tanner prize. Pretty. Tanner Pretty. <laughs> the prize. Uh, LaRue. Congratulations, Sir Tanner. Sir Tanner Pretty. 50 bucks worth of Jean LaRue products. Just uh, direct message the Stray Cast crew. And then somebody, uh, some yeah. message come up, something about a Christmas show prize or something. Whoever messaged that in the middle of the show, we'll look at that and see why you didn't get it. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. We're like Santa Claus. We give away everything here. Everything. We do. Yeah. It's a tropical wonderland. Yeah. Hey, guys. I Wanna play the sponsor the game? Don't like. hey, yeah. Greg Hackney didn't flip up the biggest specimen. Yeah, you're right. It was a crankbait. It was a square bill. Yeah. Oh, it was a square bill? I thought it was on a hack attack. I thought, jig. It, was a, I yeah. thought it was a lipless. No, I I it's thought it was Mr. Square Bill over there. And I still I should have known. You're exactly right. Tanner pretty, you won. 
<laughs> hey, let's play the sponsor game. You want to play the sponsor game? Yeah. All right, we're going to start with Andy. All right, Andy, get, get turn down the tunes a little bit. We're going to play a little sponsor game. Who's your favorite? I know, like, when you have kids, Andy, you're not supposed to pick, like, a favorite kid. But, like, pick your favorite sponsor. Who's your favorite sponsor that we have? Alpha TH. The Alpha TH. That's so. Hey, that's a, hey, you can't use two. That's a that's a combo. Well, I'm gonna give them that. So that's legal. What Those we're going, what we're gonna do is play the uh, the sponsor song game. Okay, Andy. So you've won and you get to go first. You're the lucky guy that gets the guinea pig. This whole maniacy right here. So do you have a deep voice, Andy? Can you do a deep voice? No. Well, let me hear. Just try a deep voice. I'll try deep voice. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was pretty good. So what I, what I need you to do is I'm gonna give you a little intro, and in that deep voice, you just tell me about. T.H. Marine and Alpha Angler. and well, where now I want to pick one. Okay, pick one. <laughs> yeah. Pick one. I'll, I'll pick Alpha. He's going to pick Alpha, and you tell us about Alpha Angler and, uh, and where they can go. Are you ready? Here's your intro. What am I? Oh, this is confusing. <laughs> yeah. What am, am I wrong now? You check out Alpha Angler at alphaangler.com and Facebook. Get on that get on that mailing list because they shoot out right of the month clubs and you're missing out if you don't. We'll say that. Beautiful. JP, pick one. Pick a sponsor. Bravarney Jig. Bravarney Jig. Yeah, Let's talk. Nice. Now that's a that's a little more up pace, so get ready. Swim jig. You want to climb the ladder of swim jig success. <laughs> they come in the Marriott of Colors. How the hell do you buy them? BravarniBaits.com. Boom, he nailed it. You see how he did that right yeah. there? Ryan, pick a sponsor. I use them. Damn there. jigs. Damn jigs. Okay. That is correct. Let's uh, let's go ahead. I don't get music? No. Yours is a cappella. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. You ready? Okay. Your, yours is kind of like okay. a... Okay. Yours is more of a, a cowboy campfire. Give me like a lounge. No, you're a no, you're cowboy, Harmonica. Cow, cowboy campfire. Cowboy campfire? Okay. You know, back, back at the time, I can hardly remember. Started flipping them jigs. Called me a big old bass. Hold it on back to the way in, want me a check. Get on over to themjigs.com. Order you some of them jigs. Them jigs. Yeah. Phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I will take. What are you taking? I don't want to put my mouth on that. It's a shit. What? You ready? <laughs> it's called TH Marine. You know what I mean? It's called TH Marine. You know what I mean? It's called TH Marine. You know what I mean? It's called TH Marine. You know what I mean? Because I am nightmare walking, psychopathic talking. TH Marine. You know what I mean? Because I am nightmare walking, psychopathic talking. TH Marine. You know what I mean? We'll see you next week with Mark Z. Straight cast, same time, same place. 7 p.m. Central. Straightcast.net. I'm not JP. I'm just P. Peace. Good night. Yeah. We'll see you next time. Psycho Straight Patrick cast. walking. Psycho like Patrick that. walking. That's Straight good. cast outdoor cartoon television. Next week we return with Mark Zona. Fast Master Classic Preview Show. Thank you to all that viewed. Thank you so much to all the sponsors. We couldn't do this without you. And we really have a good time. In case you can't tell. Peace. See you next week.